Okay, so you are what you drink. You have probably heard that before, right? Uh, you are what you think, you are what you eat. Uh, these are uh, statements that have been said by many uh, health practitioners. So here's the question for you today. Do you think what you drink affects the health of each and every cell in your body? That's the question that I'm going to ask Dr. Mercola tomorrow, asking that question. But I'm also asking you. And uh, I think most people would answer absolutely uh, what we drink has an effect on our bodies. In one of the books that, that I wrote called uh, The pH Miracle for Weight Loss, we talk about the importance of drinking water, and one of the chapters is specifically on water. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. And the reason why there's water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink is because it's contaminated. It's contaminated not with what I just got through talking about, ionizing radiation, but it's now contaminated with chemicals. And a lot of these chemicals are things that we're flushing down the toilet that's getting into our water table. And so if you're flushing down Zoloft or Prozac or you know, some high blood pressure medication, uh, statin drugs, what have you, this is now showing up in our water supply. So you could be drinking water and be on an anti antidepressant or you know an antibiotic or even you know some sort of statin drug and you wouldn't even know it just from the water you're drinking so the key to a long healthy vibrant life is to maintain the integrity of the internal fluids of the body by a process of superhydrating or hydrating I believe with alkaline fluids I recommend that a non-active child or adult drink at least one liter of alkaline water at a pH at a minimum of 9.5 uh, for each 30 pounds of total body weight. With increased activity though through exercise or sport I would set, suggest increasing that hydration anywhere from one and a half to two liters per 30 pounds of weight. If we look at our collective health in the US nearly one out of two Americans has a chronic condition. One out of three U.S. adults has or will have high blood pressure up 30 percent over the past decade. New type 2 diabetes cases have doubled in 30 years. Currently more than 64 percent of U.S. adults are either overweight or obese, a 36 percent increase from 1980. The prevalence of asthma has increased 75 percent 60 to 70 million annual cases of digestive diseases in the United States and nearly 46 million people in the US have some form of arthritis or chronic joint symptomology. So what does our health care cost us? It's becoming a huge part of our, of our uh, major budget, both uh, personal as well as governmental. 78% of healthcare dollars are spent on people with chronic illnesses. Per person, healthcare spending is projected to double. So what does lack of health cost each of us? So as you think about that question, and we tie that then into the importance of drinking alkaline water and maintaining what I believe is at the foundation uh, its alkaline design. The most important fluid of the body is the blood and it's slightly alkaline at a 7.365. More and more practitioners and researchers now believe that chronic degenerative disease flourishes in an acidic environment. Our body will naturally buffer these acidic states. But its ability to balance pH has been overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with acidic waters that we're drinking, acidic foods that we're eating, acidic air that we're breathing. All of these contribute to an overall acidic body. So where do most acids come from? Acids are biological waste products of metabolism, of the breakdown of our foods and the liquids we drink when we exercise. We've all felt the biological acid of lactic acid and the effects and what it causes 
when the blood purifies itself by pushing that acid out into the connective tissue. We feel it as a pain. Acids from thinking. Now if you're thinking about this, you're already producing acid because our thoughts require energy. And as you're using that energy, that's a function of metabolism. So energy used produces waste products. Also, as acids affect each individual cells or cells that make up our tissues and our organs, cells can break down. And as cells break down, they also release acids. Uh, acids are also produced by, as cells break down, are produced by the bacteria that are created and the yeast that is created, uh, produce acids like exotoxins and mycotoxins. And of course, we, we have acids from our environment. And uh, these acids are uh, carbon monoxide that we can see uh, in large cities. Uh, we see carbon monoxide coming out of the car as it's burning gasoline. It's a biological waste product. Uh, and then acids that are unseen, acids such as ionization, uh, ionizing frequencies that come from our cell phones or ionizing radiation uh, that's coming from, unfortunately, uh, nuclear plants that are melting down and are polluting our air and also our water. So what is the major organ or gland responsible for bu buffering acids of the body? I don't know if that question has ever been asked. And you surely won't find this in any medical text. Would it be your lung, would it lungs or your liver, uh, your stomach or intestines or skin? I would like to suggest to you that the major organ of the human body that's responsible for neutralizing acid is your stomach. Now most medical science perceives that the stomach is an acid environment and that is correct after it produces the alkaline compounds that help to neutralize the acids from our food. And so the stomach is, uh, is a gland or uh, excuse me an organ that produces an alkaline compound called sodium bicarbonate. It takes sodium, it takes carbon dioxide, and it takes water to produce that, and it pulls it from the blood. If our tissues need alkalinity, it's the stomach that starts creating that sodium bicarbonate to pull into the blood and tissues. What you end up with is a belly full of hydrochloric acid, and this is what causes uh, ad nauseum. Uh, nausea, which is not described in any medical text as it pertains to its pathological or origins, is simply the body's need for more alkalinity. And what a better way to increase alkalinity than with the fluids that you're, drink, that you're drinking, especially pure ionized or alkalized water. So the stomach is the correct answer. Can our body still handle this, uh, this, uh, this imbalance? We have turned an evolutionary corner. We simply do not handle acidic wastes the way we used to. This is Dr. Linda Frasetto, who I've worked with uh, on occasion with several clients uh, as it pertains to overacidity. And uh, her research has shown that the sheer volume of acid waste our body has to handle has forced us to take drastic war-style action to preserve its strategic buffering reserves. And what are those buffering reserves? The sodium bicarbonate the alkalinity that the body uses as the first defense on any acid. Of course, these reserves in the kidney and the liver are major essential detoxifying organs. The process of, or, or, uh, of overacidification is really reflected in a, in a foundational theory that there's only one sickness and one disease. Now, I know we have different names for illness and disease, but their origins are all the same. I've suggested in my work, in my research, that there's only one sickness and one disease, and that's the overacidification of the blood and then tissues due to a, a, an acidic lifestyle or dietary, or dietary choice. When we begin to live an acidic life, the first symptom of overacidity, where the body does not have the ability to neutralize that acid, or our channels of elimination have been blocked, which are urination, perspiration, defecation, and respiration, if acids are not eliminated, the body uh, tries the best it can and it uses its energy reserves to remove these acids and we start losing energy and we become enervated. We seem to be tired all the time. 
The second stage of acidosis is sensitivities or irritation. Uh, allergies is a perfect example of this. Allergy is a sensitivity to some acidic toxin, either environmental or it could be food-based too as well. Uh, the body tries to, to deal with it. It tries to buffer it and then it tries to eliminate it. If the body doesn't have ample alkaline reserves to neutralize the environmental acid or the, um, or the digestive acid, it of course expresses itself as an irritation. The third stage of acidosis is catarrh. Catarrh is when the body uses its alkaline reserves to buffer the acid regardless of where it's from and it forms a sticky mass uh, of mucus. Mucus is then the body's way of neutralizing a very toxic substance so it doesn't permeate other healthy cells and damage them. Inflammation is fourth stage acidosis as we become more toxic, as acids build up, the blood tries to maintain its integrity and delicate pH is 7.365. It pushes acids then out into the connective tissue, which is the acid catcher, catcher, catcher for the blood in order to preserve the integrity of the blood. As acid is coming from the blood into the tissues, it causes a symptom. That symptom is inflammation. The fifth stage is induration. This is when the body uses alkaline buffers, uh, such as sodium bicarbonate, but others that the body could use, which would be sodium and magnesium, potassium and calcium. The body may pull calcium from the bones in order to buffer acidity, forming acid crystals. It takes then the acid from a liquid state to a solid state, thus preserving the damage uh, since these acids can permeate any cellular membrane and damage them. So induration is the crystallization of acids that build up on the walls of our arteries or builds, build up in our lungs or in our elimination organs that restrict uh, the natural process of eliminating waste products. If our blood cannot flow because of acidic crystal buildup, this can cause an increase in our blood pressure. So the symptomologies of induration would be things like arterial sclerotic plaque, uh, hyper, uh, hypercholesterolemia, high cholesterol, and even uh, hypertension, uh, where the blood pressure, the systolic rate, uh, and the diastolic rate goes up. Even your pulse rate will go up. Uh, the sixth stage is ulceration. This is when our buffers have, have been depleted and the acids begin to deteriorate the tissues, causing internal, even internal bleeding. The seventh stage then is the final stage of acidosis and really the expression, the culmination of all sickness and disease and that is degeneration. When tissue begins to degenerate, it becomes very, very difficult to repair that. Degenerative tissue, if not eliminated, the body will encapsulate that using a clotting uh, mechanism forming a clot and we end up with uh, clots in our body. Uh, some clots or uh, some acid is bound by fat. It's a major cause of obesity is the body retaining fat as a protective mechanism in order to, buff, uh, in order to buffer acids that are not, are not being properly eliminated through the four channels of elimination.